Hi YouTube family, welcome to Concept in Medicine. Today we are going to be looking at the classification of bends. Interesting, right? Definitely. If so, kindly subscribe to my channel. Alright, so we are going to be looking at ways by which bends injuries are classified. We are going to be looking at three classification methods. That is, the first one is a traditional classification. The second one, the contemporary classification. And the third one is the radical classification. What these three classifications tend to do is that they are correlated among themselves. And we are going to be looking at that correlation. All right, so let's move on and look at the traditional classification. So for the traditional classification, it is classified into four degrees that is from first degree through to fourth degree so as we classify we are going to be correlating the various classifications at once so we'll start with the traditional first degree for the first degree bends according to the traditional classification you should know that the burn injury is going to be limited to the epidemics it does not go beyond the epidemics it's limited to the epidemics then another thing that we should take into consideration with regards to the clinical manifestation is that the first degree bends it manifests as erythema and you should bear in mind that that erythema is going to be associated with mild pain it's going to be painful but not intensely painful okay then the next thing we want to talk about with regards to the first degree bends is that it is capable of healing spontaneously within five to seven days without scarring it can heal spontaneously i mean within five to seven days without scarring so that's for the first degree bends and if you are correlating the first degree bend to the contemporary classification of bends it will correspond to the superficial partial thickness bends and if you are correlating the first degree bends to the radical classification for the radical classification what does it seek to do that classification is based on the prognosis and the treatment requirement so with that we will say that the first degree bend correlates to the superficial bends with regards to the radical classification of burn injury and what does that tend to tell you because we said the radical classification is based on the prognosis and treatment requirements so it tells you that for the superficial bends they are capable of what healing satisfactorily either spontaneously or with conservative wound care and again they do not require surgical intervention i hope we made a lot of sense with that now let's move ahead and look at the second degree burn injury using the traditional classification another thing you should realize about the second degree burn injury is that it is subdivided into two we have the second degree superficial bends and the second degree deep bends or you can also put it superficial second degree deep second degree now what does the superficial second degree or the second degree superficial bends entail so you should know that for the second degree superficial bends you should know that it is limited to the papillary dermis of the skin and it does not go beyond the papillary dermis and how would it manifest it manifests with blistering blisters okay it manifests with blistering and should you apply pressure on the blisters they will disappear that's what we call blanching so we will say that the second degree superficial there is what blanching and again the second degree superficial is capable of healing spontaneously within three weeks with no 
unfavorable scarring without unfavorable scarring it heals spontaneously within three weeks it does not form uh, unwanted scars it heals spontaneously within three weeks without unfavorable scarring and for the superficial second degree or the second degree superficial it is painful it is painful very painful now if you look at a superficial second degree or the second degree superficial corresponding it to the contemporary classification we will say that it corresponds to the superficial partial thickness bands and if you take it to the radical classification it corresponds to the superficial bands which we said is based on the treatment requirement as well as the prognosis it means that they do not require surgical intervention and also they are capable of healing satisfactorily either spontaneously or with conservative wound care let's move on for the second degree deep you should know that for that the burn injury extends to the reticular dermis it extends to the reticular dermis and how does it manifest it manifests with motlin appearance when i say motlin appearance it means the whole place will become white so we say whitening appearance and with regards to healing yes it heals spontaneously in excess of three weeks with unfavorable scarring it heals in excess of three weeks means that it will take more than three weeks to heal with unfavorable scarring now if you compare or correlate the second degree bends that's the second degree deep bends to the contemporary classification definitely it will correspond to what the deep partial thickness bend according to the contemporary classification and if you take the second degree deep bend and correlate it to the radical classification then it will correspond to the deep bends and for the deep bends based on treatment requirement definitely they will require surgical intervention in which form that will be in the form of early excision of the wound and skin grafting that will culminate into the surgical intervention but the question goes what of the prognosis they do not have the capacity to heal spontaneously they do not heal spontaneously they do not heal spontaneously that is why they will go for the surgical intervention in the form of early excision and skin grafting i hope that makes sense to us now let's move ahead and look at the third degree all right so now let's look at the third degree bends according to the traditional classification for the third degree bends you should know that it involves the full thickness of the skin and manifest with a leathery and insensate skin when i say insensate skin it means that should you do a pinprick sensation first there will be no pinprick sensation should you use a pin to prick the skin that is the site of the bends the patient will feel no pain that's what i mean by insensate skin sometimes the site of the burn can be seen with thrombose subcutaneous vessels again for the third degree bends they've lost the potential of spontaneous healing if you correlate the third degree bends to the contemporary classification it will correspond to the full thickness bend the full thickness bend and if you take it to the radical classification it will correspond to the deep bends which will require surgical intervention in the form of early excision and what skin grafting and also definitely they don't have the capacity or they don't have the potential of what healing satisfactorily so thereby requiring surgical intervention in the form of early excision and skin grafting now let's look at the last one which will be the fourth degree for the fourth degree we will say that it manifests with or it presents with a charred skin charred skin like a charcoal charred skin and extends into deeper tissues including the muscles the joints and the bones and for the fourth degree just 
like the third degree, they've also lost the potential of spontaneous healing. And if you compare the fourth degree, or correlate the fourth degree to the contemporary classification, it will belong to the full thickness bands. And if you take it to the radical classification, it will belong to the deep band, where they will require surgical intervention, and they do not have the ability to heal spontaneously. I hope that makes sense to you. Now let's summarize everything into a brief form. All right, so let's summarize everything that we've said so far into a brief format. So looking at the traditional classification, you can see we have the first degree, which will correspond to the contemporary superficial partial thickness and correspond to the radical superficial or bends. If we take the second degree, we say it is divided into two, the superficial and the deep. The superficial will correspond to the superficial partial thickness for the contemporary, and again corresponds to the superficial bends of the radical. Then if you come to the second degree deep, it will correspond to the deep partial thickness bends. And if you go to the radical, it will correspond to what? The deep bends. Then the third and fourth degree, the third and fourth degree corresponds to the full thickness bands in the contemporary and corresponds to what? The deep bands in the radical. I hope we've made a good understanding and I believe the classification of band injury is no longer going to be a headache. Thank you very much for staying through the lesson. Kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel, like, share and also comment the concept you would like to see in my next video. My name is Dr. Dell and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.